Others just came to get lucky in hopes a pot of gold may be buried under this tree. I'm going to run a backhoe and uproot that tree. I want to know where the gold is. I want the gold. Give me the gold. I want the gold. Hello and welcome to your daily crypto news. So if you have not done so already, make sure you're a subscriber to our channel. If you are a subscriber, make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications when we have new videos. Also, don't forget to smash the like button for us so more people will get to see the video. So yesterday we talked about uh, maybe naming our community and it seems like people like Bit Squad. So we're going to go with that from now on. Uh, you are the Bit Squad. That is my people. Thanks for being a part of our community. We appreciate all the engagement. So, okay, let's look at the markets today. I'm going to pop a graphic behind me, and uh, you can see the green candle of the century, if you will. That's probably an overstatement, but when it hit, people definitely were excited. Uh, Bitcoin had gotten down to around 5,800, and as I've talked about several times, I just don't see the $4,000 Bitcoin. I don't see it. I don't see it going far into the fives. I said many times, I think it could hit 58, 59, and it would pop back up. And we saw that. So hopefully my prediction will hold and we won't see it go down uh, below 5,800 again. Maybe that was the bottom. I want to show you guys this tweet from Charlie Lee. Uh, this would have been back in the middle of the bull run. So December 11th, he said, okay, sorry to spoil the party, but I need to rein in the excitement a bit. Buying Litecoin is extremely risky. I expect us to have a multi-year bear market like the one we ha we just had where Litecoin dropped 90% in value from $48 to $4. So if you can't handle LTC dropping to $20, don't buy. Well, now we've seen this. Now we haven't seen Litecoin drop to $20, but in the markets, we've seen several cryptocurrencies down over 90%. And so I think that this is more evidence that we're getting to the end of the bear run. Now, will we see sideways action for a long time? Will we drop a little bit lower, maybe on both of those? That doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to go straight from a bear market to a bull market. As we know, in the springtime, we were kind of living almost in the middle there for a long time. It seemed like we just weren't going up, we weren't going down. So we could see that. But I do think that this is evidence. And Charlie Lee is a good indicator of the markets, in my opinion, because... He sold all of his Litecoin, pretty much. I think 90% of it, or maybe he sold all of it, at the all-time high. So this man is smart. He knows what he's talking about. And, you know, he's been saying some things on Twitter lately that make you think that, you know, maybe things are about to turn around. So uh, I, I, he's a great follow on Twitter. If you are on Twitter, make sure you follow me, bitboy underscore hodl. Uh, and follow Charlie Lee because he's got some good sentiments. I think he is one of the best people we have in the cryptocurrency space. So, okay, back to the markets. Uh, as you can see, everything is down. The market cap is at $251 billion. Uh, 251 billion. Uh, don't want to shortchange a billion today. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is up almost 42% at 41.9%. So this is obviously bad news. We don't want this. I think that part of this may have been people FOMOing in on that candle is why it's a little higher. But, you know, ho hopefully that Bitcoin dominance will start to drop. So I found an interesting tweet. Uh, along the lines of, I can't remember exactly what it said, but basically what it was saying is at the, the end of the bull run for Bitcoin or when it topped out is when the alt season really started and people started FOMOing in on altcoins left and right because they thought they had left out or missed out on Bitcoin. And so this tweet raised the interesting point that maybe when we are at the end of the bear market, we will see the same thing. So it, once it touches the top or the bottom, you'll see an altcoin season, which would be really cool. Uh, altcoin season isn't something we've talked about in quite a while because it seems so far off, but hopefully it will be here sooner than later. So biggest winners of the day, there aren't many, only a few up over 2%. Uh, we have Wakey Chain that had a big jump today, uh, but of course, as we talked about it, uh, in a lot of our news videos, it's been tanking lately. So good to see it on the up and up. Theta Token, Monero, Moac, Bank to the Future, those are all um, up over 4%. Biggest losers of the day, eh. Nothing really stands out as a huge loser because there's almost everything is in this uh, about 2% to 13% range. As you can see, the numbers just go up pretty, you know, in pretty even increments. So even though Digix Dow is down 13%, uh, you know, it's not that out of line with most of the losers for the day. So it's just a bad day on the markets, but hopefully that green candle will really pick things up for us. 
So one interesting thing that we've been talking about that did actually occur today briefly, it is back in the number 11 spot, was that Tether moved into the top 10. Tether was actually at number 9 for a little bit today. As I mentioned, it has dropped back down to number 11. Tron and IOTA are back in the top 10. But that's not really good for crypto when a stable coin is in our top 10. We don't really want that. We want products that are growing. We want projects that are moving up, uh, that are innovating. We don't want something that's always going to be stuck around a dollar. So, uh, and today, Tether's at 101, or it was earlier at 101, which is something you also don't want. You wanted exactly one dollar. But probably that just had to do with the volatility of the rest of the market and a lot of people tethering at one time or, you know, getting out of tether to buy into positions and things like that. So the key, the key has recently entered into cooperation on research of blockchain application and social security service with the Chinese government. We love the key. We love what they're doing as far as identity verification on the blockchain. So it makes sense that they would be working with a government and a social security office because is there anything you hate more than going to the social security office? It's like literally the worst. Uh, you have to wait forever and nobody knows what documents you need. It just seems like it's a very clunky system. And so being able to have identity, identity verified on the blockchain, and I, I'm not exactly sure what that will look like for us, but I know it's got to be better than what we have now. I'm not sure what China's look like, but I know in the United States, it's kind of a, a mess. So hopefully we will be able to uh, see the key continue to work with the government and become a bigger project. Very bullish on the key. I think it is a great project. So Bitmain is nearing 51% of Bitcoin's network hash rate, which would basically put Bitmain in charge of Bitcoin. They would be able to double spend and all kinds of other things uh, that could look like abuse. Uh, but right now it's not. It says it's nearing 51%. Right now, uh, so there are two uh, pools that... Bitmain owns. They own uh, BTC.com and they also own Antpool. Now, between these two, uh, these two pools, it makes up 42%. So it's not nearly 51%, but as you can see here, they're also mining Bitcoin Cash. So if they were able to pull away what they were mining in Bitcoin Cash and focus that on Bitcoin, then that percentage could rise even further. Um, there's really no telling how long it's going to take Bitmain to get to 51%, but it's important to note that this has actually happened before. Uh, Ghash was another company that uh, mined Bitcoin, and at one point they were at 55% of Bitcoin's hash rate. So it has happened. This doesn't necessarily mean uh, that they have Bitmain. I mean, it's a reputable company. I don't think they have any kind of plans to uh, you know, do anything negative, but all it would take is one person there at Bitmain going rogue to basically wreak a havoc on Bitcoin. So we don't want that. Uh, I think that if it did near there, there would be a public outcry and we'd have to figure out some way to prevent this from happening. By being divided into two different pools, that is one kind of protection that they've added in here. But ultimately, it is still the same company. So if they do hit 51%, you would say Bitcoin is centralized in a way. So hopefully we won't see that happen. Uh, and if it did, then one thing Bitcoin could do to prevent this would be to switch from proof of work to proof of stake. We've seen this across a lot of different coins, but like when Monero switched, all of a sudden now you open yourself up to a 51% attack and be able to get hacked because proof of work is a more uh, secure system. But of course, if someone owns 51%, then that goes out the window. So very interesting. Let me know your thoughts on Bitmain and on mining. If you're in the mining community, I'm not huge into mining myself. Uh, I have the Honeypot miner. I think I've got 30 cents on it. So uh, I'll put my link if you guys want to download. If you guys want to download that uh, that miner and just throw it on your computer and just be making a few cents a day, uh, it works. It's very easy. You, you just download it and it's pretty much ready to run immediately. Uh, and so you can start mining today. So I'll put my link at the top of the video description and you can check that out if you want to. I wasn't planning on showing that to you guys, but it is kind of cool. I've got to run it on a different computer of mine. I don't even pay attention to it. So maybe if I go back in a year, it'll be worth like $100 and that'll be good to at least have, you know, something. I'm not doing anything uh, on it. So very interesting. But let's uh, let's move on and look at this interview so very interesting, if you look here at the bottom of this Reddit page 
here, I will click on it, Oop, open it twice. It takes you to a Chinese video site. And you know, investigating, they love KFC in China. Whew, that was a lot. So, but this is the point of why I wanted to show you guys that, that page instead of just focusing on the material here, um, is that in China, you've got to watch like four or five videos, like four or five ads before it'll show you the content. And we complain a lot in the United States about uh, how we have to watch one ad and we can click past it in seven seconds. I had to watch like five full commercials to get to that video, which is more proof of why we need the Brave browser uh, it blocks ads for you. It's great. You can also download that below in the video description. You can help support our channel. But the interview is a Chinese interview with Justin Sun, the founder of Tron. And he takes a shot at Vitalik Buterin in that video. Uh, he basically says that Vitalik is going to miss Tron when they move on because he's the biggest token on the Ethereum network. And not only that, but then Justin Sun goes to give re uh, three reasons why Tron is better than ETH. He says TPS will be 400 times faster. Solidity is not a popular choice of programming language, which I agree with. The Java Tron and Tron TVM, the Tron virtual machine, would be easier for adoption and no transaction fees. So the last question in this interview is, so will you graduate soon, uh, meaning after the Tron Independence Day, are you worried about possibly facing new challenges from waves of newcomers that are more talented and better than you in the future? And that's when Justin Sun says, Maybe Vitalik will have this problem. Uh, and he says he's not doing a good job and is anxious, but Justin Sun is fine. So very interesting. And I expect probably we will get a tweet in response to this from Vitalik Buterin. He has shown in the past that he is willing to take jabs and send them right back. But I almost see this as kind of like, um, kind of like a wrestling call out. You know, if you watch wrestling, which I don't really, I did when I was a kid. But whether it was Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior or The Rock and Stone Cold Austin, you know, they're always calling each other out. And that's kind of how I see this on like a nerdy tech level. Hulk Hogan! Hulk Hogan! You Hulk Hogan! Hulk Hogan! Hulk Hogan! So it's almost like he's saying, hey, I see you over there. My project's better than my, than yours. What are you going to say about it? Um, and so I'm expecting Vitalik Buterin to come back with something insightful or witty uh, to combat what Justin Tron said. I think just like how Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior were really friends when they got off the stage, um, I, I expect probably Vitalik Buterin and Justin Sun are probably friends in real life to some extent at least have a friendly relationship. I bet when they get together, they don't talk about these jabs back and forth. Uh, so it is just very interesting that we see this in the crypto community. These are some of the, the pillars of blockchain that we are looking at, uh, trading these shots back and forth. So I just thought it was very interesting. Well, guys, that's all I got for you today. Not a lot of altcoin news coming out today. Uh, as we've talked about, when the markets are down, altcoins try to kind of hold their news back a little bit. So who knows? If we have a little run tomorrow, maybe we'll get some good altcoin news coming in to talk about. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a part of our community. The Bit Squad makes it worth it uh, for me to be here doing these videos. I don't do them for my own health, believe it or not. I do it for the community. So thanks for being a member of the Bit Squad. Thanks for engaging with us. I just want to say thank you to everybody once again for helping me get to over a thousand subscribers now. Uh, we're just trucking them right along. Looking forward to our contest. Um, on July 1st. And a big shout out to you guys that have been with us from the beginning. I know some of you guys have been with us since we were at less than 100 subs. And uh, that means the world to me. So just appreciate everything. Until next time, that was your Daily Crypto News.